we have looked at uh, the link between physical fitness and spiritual fitness. And when you think about it in Ephesians 6, it talks about the word spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you bring it into the physical realm, uh, when you look at how man treats warfare, when you have a basic recruit go through basic training, they have a certain fitness protocol. And it's the same. And then if you have a Navy SEAL or an Army Ranger, they have a certain fitness protocol. Well, if you one's really, really hard and one's pretty tough. Well, what's the reason? Well, first of all, the protocol is tied to the mission. So the mission God has for us in life would determine what level of fitness we need to be in, in my view. And I'll tell you about a study we're thinking about doing to kind of help mm-hmm. with this. But the, the other thing is, is that um, the reason for fitness is to handle the stress of battle. Well, we both know that in life there's the stress of battle. Mm-hmm. So um, the, the other thing I would, was going to mention to you about the study that uh, we, we've proposed, we don't know when we'll get to do it. We're going to take a 33-year-old male that's fit, a 33-year-old male that is unfit, and we know how far Jesus walked a week, 53 miles. Hmm. We know how much blood he lost when he was scourged. We know how much the cross weighed. We know how far he walked with the cross before someone helped him. The hypothesis of this study is the fit man who we take the blood draw from will get to that distance that Jesus walked before somebody helped him. The unfit person won't, which tells us that if we want to fulfill the purpose that God has in our life, we should be physically fit. Very interesting. I I was thinking back, you say 51 miles? 53 miles 53 a week. 53 miles a week. Correct. That Jesus walked. walked. Mm-hmm. So, so Dr. Thompson, if we're following in the footsteps of Jesus, you're recommending 53, uh, 53 miles a week? Well, that's what God, if God calls you to 53, then, then by golly, you better do it. Uh, and if, but there's ways to, you know, but to understand that yeah. when he was, uh, he, I, right, but his, um, the spiritual side that kept him on the cross was the vision. Yeah. The physical side that helped him stay up there was he was, he was in good shape. He was a carpenter, so he worked his upper body. And uh, and he was in good cardiovascular fit shape to have walked all those miles. Well, let's talk about the the mental component. You talk mm-hmm. about the mind and the soul as well as the body, expecting the best of your mind. I think the the mind that arena is where we miss it often as Christians. I think so. And and here's what I would say: the closest physical thing that we have to God is our mind. And I think of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven that he knows the plans for us, so he th- he's thinking about us. Well, it's how we you know how does God think about things, and what does God think? And one of the things that I found, if you want to change long term behavioral uh, things in your life that you know aren't good for you, the first thing you've got to do is change the way you think, mm. and then the second thing is submit your will to that new way of thinking. If all you do is wish and pray and try, you'll go about eight weeks and quit. But you want to be able to have the opportunity to make those long-term changes. How does placing Scripture into one's mind and really thinking in terms of godly thoughts, how how does that affect what we're talking about here? It's fundamental. I mean, literally, I mean, in my own life, what I try to do, and, and, and it's probably a little cheesy, corny, I read Psalm 91 when I start every day, hmm. and that was my number in college. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I read that every every day, and that sets the tone. It sets the tone. Yeah. There'll be other times I'll do some Bible study and, and get, get more, but I, I just think it's the way to start. 